Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is the Prince of FNAF and if you're new here, please consider subscribing and also be sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you'll indeed be notified for any awesome videos like this in the future. Hello everybody, my name is the Prince of FNAF and welcome back to yet another scariest Fazbear Frights Monsters video. In fact, there are some really good ones in tonight's videos. There's some stuff that really disturbed me. I really questioned if I still wanted to indulge in Five Nights at Freddy's and be part of the fandom. There's stuff that's that bad. But with that being said, I guess let's start off with one that really, really disturbed me. And that is sea bonnies. Now, I am not a fan of insect parasites, you know, parasitic insects. Those really bother me. Like, I don't, I don't do bed bugs and all that kind of stuff. That stuff really bothers me. No fleas. But in this story, a little kid gets a prize from the prize corner after he gets a bunch of tickets for playing games at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and he decides to get some sea bonnies, which are basically sea monkeys, but Fazbear Entertainment has re-engineered them to look more like a mixture between the sea monkeys as well as kind of Bonnie, one of their animatronics. And when they get home, they put them in the same tank as their fish called Fritz, which, hey, it's a nod to Fritz Smith from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. But so they put the sea monkeys in there, or the sea bonnies. And at first they seem really friendly until the kid's brother, who finds the sea monkeys to be disturbing to him, says that, oh, they're kind of gross, man. Th th that's kind of horrible. And so immediately after he does this, the sea monkeys become very hostile to him. And throughout the course of the story, they are tormenting him, getting into his head and, and you know, talking to him, whispering to him. And they are very intelligent. They're not just your regular run-of-the-mill sea monkey creatures. These things are actually quite intelligent. And so they end up killing the fish Fritz by just going inside of him, eating from the inside out, and then assuming the form of Fritz the fish, which is disturbing as fuck, and I don't like that. And obviously you get where the story's going. So the kid eventually gets tired of these things talking to him and, you know, them being all creepy and gross and, you know, what they did to their pet goldfish, so he takes the, the sea bodies and flushes them down the toilet. And a couple of months pass, and then one night he gets really thirsty, so he goes to the bathroom sink to drink some uh, of that water, and something goes into his throat, and now obviously you know what this is, he swallows a couple of sea monkeys, and they start uh, reproducing in his stomach acid. And then over the course of various different days, he starts to hear them talking to him again. And, and now the sea monkeys are like eating him from the inside out. They're in his gut and then they move up to his, up to like his chest area and then up into his brain. And so he slowly starts, you know, dying and falling apart. His brain, his thoughts are all confused. And he just slowly starts turning into this kind of sea monkey human thing. And this is the part that disturbs me. So after a while, after he starts to realize that he's getting consumed by the sea monkeys, he starts ripping chunks of his flesh off to try to get away from them. And when he rips off chunks of his flesh, he can see the sea monkeys actually inside the flesh. And then they zoom back into his, into his body. I do not like this at all. This disturbs me so much. You don't even, you don't even know. But at the end of the story, the sea monkeys end up overtaking the character that they become attached to and they just basically consume him and take up his form and now the sea monkeys are living like this guy they're living his life and it disturbs me it disturbs me so very much but yeah now i think the next one is evenly matched when it comes to creepiness and just the shock wow factor so let's get started with gumdrop angel now, the story follows a girl named Angel who feels like she's distant from the family. In fact, she hates her family because of this. Her mother married a rich guy, and the rich guy is very, very involved with his daughter and doesn't actually do anything else for the rest of the family outside of the wife. 
So she just feels kind of left out and obviously resents her stepfather for that. But she's not mean. I mean, not directly to the people. Um, so they go to a birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and this huge kind of humanoid figure, but it's made out of like gum and candy, comes down and it's waving around, it's flopping around and it's the birthday girl gummy. And so all the kids eat it and then the announcer keeps on saying that when the gummy is eaten, the nose must be eaten by Ophelia. It must be eaten. And he keeps on saying this over the course of the time the kids are spending eating this thing. And so obviously when they all get home, the main character, Angel, wants to eat this thing. And so she gets into a fight with her uh, with her stepfather because he won't pay for her her schooling to go to the art school, but he'll pay for like horses for his daughter and horseback lessons and all that stuff. So obviously this gets into a fight and it leads to her deciding to eat her stepsister's kind of gummy thing. So she eats the nose and then she goes to sleep. And when she wakes up, things start happening to her body. She starts getting these, these kind of weird rashes and they keep growing and it's a fast spreading rash. So she goes and tries to wash them off in the bathroom and she gets out of the bathroom and she's growing these kind of scales from the rash. They're just kind of these jello looking scales. And then she then calls this boy that she met at the, at the pizzeria and she started becoming friends with. And the boy says, oh, you, you need to come down to Freddy's. And she's like, well, what do you mean? She goes, I can fix this. Just come down to Freddy's. I'm so sorry that this happened to you. And so you see where this is going. So she goes with the boy to Freddy's. And as they're, as they're walking through Freddy's, she hears the noise of something like moving around. And he says, don't worry about that. That's just the animatronics doing daily maintenance. And obviously that's not what's going on. The animatronics in this location are possessed and are walking around at night. So they finally get to the back room of Freddy's and she's at this point just become this gelatinous thing mixed with candy and everything. And so this boy lowers her to a box and says, everything is going to be okay. And I'm sure you know where this is going. The next day she's kind of just delirious. She doesn't really know what's going on. But she can hear voices in the background. She can hear an announcer. And what happens is one of the most disturbing things in a Five Nights at Freddy's book I've ever read. And that is, she is now the birthday candy girl from the beginning of the story. So what happened is when she ate that nose, the candy nose that she wasn't supposed to eat, that Ophelia was supposed to eat, it turned her into this kind of humanoid very feminine looking girl but she's made out of like candy and shit and so the interesting thing about this that really makes this disturbing is that she can still feel and she can still kind of hear and see things so pretty much you know what happens the kids go over to her and they start eating her alive and the makes it disturbing is that she can feel all of this she can feel all of this stuff happening to her as they're eating her, ripping chunks of her out because, you know, they think that she's just candy, but she's actually alive. And this makes it really disturbing. In fact, I think it's very tame compared to the Sea Bonnie story, but it's still very, very dark because she gets turned into this humanoid kind of gumdrop candy person and then gets eaten alive by children. That's... Uh, that's that's dark and again really deserves a spot on this list and in case you're wondering yes the gumdrop person that we see at the beginning of the story was yet another victim or so we're led to believe now this next one is really scary to me not so much because of what happens in the story but because of what happened after i finished reading the story when I was finished reading the story, some really spooky stuff happened in real life. So we'll get to that after I finish telling the scary story. The name of the story is Blackbird, and we follow two school-aged kids as they are given a project by their teacher. They have to make a horror film. They got to film it. They got to design their own set pieces and their own costumes. And so the kids ponder for a minute and they decide that they want to base their scary movie 
off of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and some of the scary things that have supposedly happened there. But they can't use any characters that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza already has. So they came up with a character called the Blackbird who is supposed to haunt you after you convince a dark uh, thing that you've done in your past. And so they're like, ooh, this is really scary. And so they get started on, you know, making the set pieces as well as one of the characters actually designs the Blackbird costume. And this is, it's all going really well. And then one day when they are supposed to be filming, the kid's best friend gets hit by a train while wearing the Blackbird suit. And then obviously he starts getting haunted by the actual Blackbird. And this was all after the main character had told his best friend that, oh, I, uh, I bullied a, a girl in high school and, you know, I was really mean and it wasn't that funny. And he's like, no, because I used to be bullied and that's not funny. And so immediately after this, he gets hit by a train. And so he starts getting haunted by the Blackbird, very similar to how their movie was supposed to pan out. You know, uh, the person tells a dark secret that they have and then the Blackbird will continue to haunt them. And so the events of their movie are panning out in real life and it's pretty spooky. So he keeps on getting haunted by the Blackbird. The Blackbird seemingly tries to kill him in his sleep. It's very, very creepy. The Blackbird makes some really disturbing noises like weird buzzing kind of murmuring sounds as well as sounds of demonic birds. Um, even the Blackbird itself appears very demonic and it just is always around in the shadows and just he keeps hallucinating that he's seen the Blackbird and it's not made crystal clear if this is his friend or if it's literally the Blackbird itself. So at the end of the story, he decides, okay, I've had enough of this Blackbird. This thing is clearly trying to kill me and everything like that. And if I don't do something, bad things are going to happen. So he goes to, he seeks out whoever this person was, the bully uh, that he bullied when he was in school and he finds this girl and he finds out where she's located. And so he goes to say sorry to her and she doesn't even remember who he is, but he does say what happened. And she's like, no, don't worry about it. What you did helped me. What you did, you know, made me into the person I am now. It made me into a confident person. And so, you know, it's a tender moment. And then everything's over. Blackbird does not appear anymore. And they, the police phone him and say that they found his best friend. He got hit by the train, but he's okay. He fell into the... Uh, into the ditch, the quarry, you know, next to the train, and he was just, uh, his legs were broken, so he couldn't crawl out, which is very, very interesting, and now, I'm not sure what happened if, while well, he was, like, unconscious, if he turned into the Blackbird and started haunting the main character, or if he really did get haunted by a version of the Blackbird, which is a very interesting concept, and immediately after I finished kind of reading the story on my phone, um, cause I don't have access to my actual collection of books. I started reading this on my phone and immediately after I finished reading it, uh, my phone shut down. The battery was full. There was no reason for my phone to be shutting off cause the battery was full. And then the lights in the kitchen started flickering. I kid you not. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm cursed. I I'm totally cursed. Um, but yeah, nothing else happened after that. But it was just a really spooky coincidence that after I finished reading the story, my phone shut off for no reason. And then the lights in the kitchen started flickering. This is at 12 at night. This is at, at midnight. So very spooky. Next up, we have Plush Trap Chaser. And just the whole idea of this story is what bothers me. This toy that's supposed to chase kids when the lights are out and can actually talk and that's not what's scary because hey toys are usually very small now this is not a small toy this is the size of a child of a toddler so it's a, quite a large toy and the fact that this thing is designed to be able to chase you when the lights are out is really terrifying and i don't like it i i don't like it and another thing that really adds to the horror of the story is Plush Trap's appearance in this story. He is quite different, supposedly, from the rest of the plush traps that are available in the stores. This one has very realistic bloodshot eyes, and instead of having the sharp fangs that the plush trap are supposed to have, this one has very humanoid teeth with almost what looks like gummy flesh attached to the base of these teeth. 
So the story is basically about a popular toy. The character in this story loves Plush Trap, the character, because apparently the Five Nights at Freddy's characters are actually characters within this universe. So he loves Plush Trap, it's his favorite. And when he finds out that there's a Plush Trap Chaser toy coming out, for whatever reason, this thing is disturbing, he still wants it. And so he goes to all the stores to try to get it, but he just keeps having bad luck because he can't say no. His friends want something or his mom wants him to help with something. And so he really wants to get this toy. However, things keep coming up that he can't get it. So when the chance provides itself, he decides to take it. When he goes to a store that still happens to have some plush trap chasers and stuff, he takes that opportunity to go and see if he can get one. However, all of them are sold out, and when he goes up to the counter, he can see that there's a bunch of employees crowded in the back of the counter space, and they're all looking at something. And this something ends up being a very messed up version of the plush trap chaser toy. So obviously, being very desperate that he wants this toy, he slams the money down on the counter. He's like, I want that one, the one that's in the back. And they're like, uh, you can't have that one. It's not for sale. It's fucked up. We, we can't sell that to you. So what he ends up doing is he ends up taking the plush trap chaser and he takes it home with him. And his friends realize that, yeah, it is kind of messed up. It's got humanoid looking eyes. It's got what looks like flesh in its mouth and like, and like human teeth. And it just looks really, really creepy looking. And so obviously this thing does not work. And so they, they just carry on with their lives. Halloween rolls around and they're about to go trick-or-treating. But, you know, things come up and, you know, unfortunately he's not able to go trick-or-treating. This upsets him. And then the power goes out. There's like a electrical surge and plush trap chaser activates. And it starts talking. Like saying, the lights are out. And just walking around the house. And there's actually parts in the, in the book where it actually bites through the door like a freaking chainsaw in its mouth it starts chewing through the door the scariest part about this is that the plush trap chaser toy is also designed to be able to bite through metal so this is disturbing beyond compare so this thing is running around in the middle of the fucking dark house in a, in a thunder rainstorm chasing the kids around biting itself through doors uh, it's just really really crazy eventually they realize they need to get this thing out now because it's going to kill them so they start running up a hill hopefully there will be a train that will come by and they can just run past the train and they know that plush trap will follow and get stuck in the train headlights and then be squished by the train and that's how they defeat him but just the idea of this toy being able to chase people while it's dark is disturbing i just combined with the sheer size of the toy as well as its appearance it's just very unnerving and disturbing I mean, I have lots of toys in my collection, as I do collect action figures and collectibles, but nothing is near this size. So if it did become possessed or alive, I could just kick that fucker over and it'd be dead. But the fact that this thing is just on such a massive scale for a toy, and that this thing wants to kill you and attack you, and its teeth are supposedly strong enough to break through metal, um, that is very upsetting. Next up, we have Hide and Seek, where we get to see Shadow Bonnie. We haven't actually heard about this guy in a while since his inclusion in FNAF World and in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. In this story, a kid is quite involved with the fighting with his brother over the success. So, if you don't know what I mean by that, his brother is very successful at playing video games and in just everything he's a natural born winner and the main character is not a winner he in fact loses at everything so when a new game comes out at freddy fazbear's pizza he wants to play it and it's called hide and seek and it's not a video game it's actually one of those interactive kind of escape room games and in the game you have to go across three levels in three minutes you get three tries and there is a game where you have to find out where Shadow Bonnie is going to go to. There's a pizzeria, there's a park, there's an apartment building. There's various different locations that Shadow Bonnie can go to. And obviously he plays this game multiple times and he can't figure it out because it keeps losing. And so in a mad blind rage, he destroys the game, smashes everything, wrecks everything like the freaking Incredible Hulk. 
and the Bonnie is nowhere to be seen. It disappears after this. And he has a nightmare the day prior, or the night prior, that something is being sewn into his back, and it's later revealed that that something is actually Shadow Bonnie. And Shadow Bonnie, hereafter, starts feeding off of his negative emotions, in fact, the angrier and more upset that our main character gets, the more powerful and demonic Shadow Bonnie becomes, and the more of the character's energy seems to be drained. So not only is Shadow Bonnie becoming a lot more bigger and aggressive and more demonic, but he's also leeching the energy off of the character until the very end of the book where Shadow Bonnie actually gets the main character to commit suicide because he just can't get over his need and ignorance to win. Because at the end of the story, it's revealed that Shadow Bonnie just wants to win the game against our main character, and he realizes that, but when the time finally comes, he just can't get over the fact that he needs to win, and this ends with him committing suicide, and both him and Shadow Bonnie dying. But with that being said, what did you guys think about my new and improved list, the part two to my scariest Freddy Fazbear, Five Nights at Freddy's Fazbear Frights playlist? We got all kinds of scary characters in tonight's video. In fact, this is actually twice as long as my original scariest Fazbear Frights monsters video. But again, let me know what you guys thought and if any of these scared you. But with that being said, hope you guys enjoy. Do take care and... Have a great night.